Welcome back to Femora Canine Training and on this video we're going to be answering some more of your questions to help you become high level canine leaders that can raise perfect canine companions. Welcome back guys, if you are new here, my name's Will, I'm a canine behaviourist and I'm the founder and CEO here at FemreaCanineLeaders.com. This is my wonderful wife Rachel, she's been asking you some questions over on Instagram or you've been asking her questions on Instagram and you've been collating them. Well I asked one question which was, have you got any questions? And then you ask her questions, <laughs> this whole question vortex that then ends up here with me and I'm going to hopefully help you. So let's dive into uh, the very first question. Okay, first question. Um... My girlfriend and I have a five-month-old Staffy puppy. Then there's a bit of bump that I won't read. So the puppy has recently become very stubborn and picky about her food. She's only really interested in it when we jazz it up. I know, know what they mean by that. Mm. We, do, we <laughs> have done that in the past. We've been told that puppies going off their food, food is a danger sign for more serious problems. But if she isn't acting out of character... We do not want to raise a dog who thinks that they can get what they want by this behaviour. What do you advise us to do? Okay, so you're already sense. kind of aware of one of the main issues yeah. with that, um, which is good. It's kind of two things to any questions like that. First and foremost, you've got to get that checked by a vet to ensure that there isn't anything going on behind the scenes that like could be concerning or... illness, anything. Yeah. Again, we're not vets, we can't advise you on those things. But if the vet gives you a completely clear bill of health and they are just making a decision to turn their nose up at the food, well then, yes, they are. Um, that would be more along the realms of a learnt behaviour where they've learned if they ignore the food, you jazz it up, they get something that's nicer. So I would potentially recommend maybe looking at a raw food diet because that is as jazzed up as it can get. And it's also, in my opinion, the most healthy diet that you can offer your dog. We have got a raw food masterclass. I'll leave a link to that in the description box below if you want to check out some more information about the raw food diet. But other than that, my advice really, and I suppose this comes from me because I'm a little bit old school and tough love approach. You don't want to eat your food, you don't have it. If that was Sully, and Sully turned his nose up at his food, I never leave food down for my dogs. I would pick it up, and then he would wait till tomorrow. He's not going to die. He's not going to starve. Dogs are used to fasting in the wild. They would fast for days with no problem whatsoever. And Sully would very quickly learn, well, I better eat this, because it's not going to get me anything nicer. And that problem would go away within a couple of days. There's no way in a million years a dog will let itself starve or let itself have any kind of issues. It's just being stubborn. Unless it already has Which a you've problem, already written already, off because you've yeah. spoke to your vet and had okay. a clean bill of health. So, yeah, that would be... I'm not going to say that's what you should do because I suppose that's in the realm of people flapping and worrying and stuff, but that is what I would do, and I'll leave it there. Okay. Let's go for another question. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, dogs are dogs. Treat them like All dogs. Stop country. treating them like babies or children or pandering to them. It, it makes everything worse. Okay. You're gonna, you might have to skip there. You're going to make me do some editing? Yeah. What is going on? I like it when we just go straight through. I know, but... The organisation. You just can't get the staff these days. <laughs> are you leaving this in? <laughs> I might have to now. I'm busy. I haven't got time to edit. Okay, this is a good question, actually. Um, so, basically, someone is concerned that their puppy, they've been socialising them really well, it's now good. 12 weeks. Okay, four um, weeks. Connie Corso. Yeah. Um, but they're worried that he's now too friendly. They want him to be a guard dog. Okay. now they're worried he's too friendly. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, I get this all the time. A 12-week-old puppy is not a guard dog. Now, the question first of all asks, I can already imagine just from the tone of that, because you're asking this question, you are not doing formal protection work with that Connie Corso. That Connie Corso is gonna be a family companion that is there as a guard dog is for worst case, God forbid, scenarios. When that dog grows up, puppies grow out of that familiarity that excitement and the best way to achieve that is through incredible levels of socialization what you want to do is get to the adulthood which is when they'll naturally start to be more aloof and nonchalant towards strangers that they're so well socialized that they understand those cues really well so they can differentiate friend from foe because the worst thing you want is an under socialized connie corso that can't mm. work out those Q 
cues and makes the wrong decision, attacks the postman, attacks a friend, attacks one of your children's friends if you've got children and they come over to the house, that is then a dead Connie Corso because it gets put down and then it creates a negative stereotype around Connie Corsos. As a Connie Corso grows up, it is so deep within them with all mastiff breeds to guard and protect their families that if god forbid anything should ever happen to you or your family where you have that scenario they will kick into action mm -hmm. and there is nothing you can kind of work on as a part of that unless you're going into formal protection training or ipo or french show ring or any of those crazy stuff that isn't what we're talking about here what i specialize in is companion animals companion large powerful guard dogs i i and guess you would say as well that if if you have a family um like ch if you have children then and that dog is living in the home then whether it was bought to be a guard dog or not the priority has to yeah. be with the children. And the children's friends that may come over to the home because that is where most children get bit by large, powerful dogs is they've gone to their friends' homes where there's a, a Rottweiler, a Corso, a German Shepherd, a Malinois. They're playing, as kids do. Dog misreads situation, wants to protect its children because it's naturally inclined to do so. Attacks the other child, dog gets put down. Another statistic towards that dog breed. So basically not to worry about mm -hmm. over-socialising. Yeah. Do it's... more. If you want a more effective guardian, do more socialisation. That friendliness will naturally go as it gets older. Um, and you want a nice friendly dog. So let's say this is you 10 years. Your Connie Corso is going to live for 10 years. Let's hope that in that 10 years, nothing ever happens, which is the case for most people in first world countries. Okay, maybe worst case scenario, something does happen. 10 years, 3,650 3, days. Of those 3,650 so something days, yeah. <laughs> give or take, one day, maybe, you might need that dog to kick into those garden instincts. Those other 3,649 days are not worth jeopardizing for the just in case for that one day. The deterrent of seeing that dog, regardless of whether it's friendly or not, is more than enough for their 99.9% .9 of attempted burglaries, attempted robberies, any kind of home invasion or attack on person. The sheer sight and sound of a Connie Corso is more than enough to deter them away. So what you have a responsibility to your family, your friends, to the community and to the breed is to over-socialize them and make them as friendly as possible. Because unless you're having a formal protection dog that is going through professional protection training, that is your responsibility as a good ethical owner. If you're into Connie Corsos, I can guarantee you watch Jason Corey by now with Bruce Wayne, and he will tell you the same thing. Go and watch his home invasion video where he pretends to break into his own house and watch how Bruce Wayne reacts to that home invasion as a Connie Corso at three years old. And Bruce Wayne is the most socialized puppy in the world. And as a puppy, he was incredibly friendly, like what you're having now, but still reacted in that way. So don't worry about it. Whatever amount of socialization you're doing now, do more. And you will thank yourself for it in a few years' time. I absolutely promise you. And if you want to go into the more protection work, then mm -hmm. seek a professional. Yeah, to find do. a club find a professional club. Don't go and watch some videos on YouTube and try and do it yourself. Find a professional protection trainer that does it for a living and join a club and do it properly. Um, if you're not gonna do that, then socialize. And even if you do that, they will encourage you to get out and socialize because if you want a formal protection dog, they have to be calm. And to be calm, they have to be well socialized in all environments so that they can remain calm so that you can on command ask for those protection and guarding skills so more socialization you're not doing enough no one in the world is so however much you're doing now go out and do more okay oh trying to take a step off your horse there <laughs> did i get on the high horse there you're or a little horse a high horse i think Mama. um does taking your puppy for toilet trips during the night positively reinforce the crying Oh, excellent question. That's somebody who... Uh, someone asked me this We've in person few... recently. Um, if... You will very quickly learn that there's two kind of cries. There's, I need to go to the toilet cry. That's a good cry. Thank you for letting me know that you need to go to the toilet. I'm going to let you out. And then there is, I want attention. Give me attention 
cry and that's the one we don't want to go and do if you're willing to get up in the night some people make the decision we go to bed at 10 p.m so i'm going to lift up food and water at 6 p.m so that means i've got three or four hours at one minute to 10 i'm going to take them out they've got a chance to go to the toilet and then i get up at 6 a.m and if they go to the toilet inside fine but they are not i'm ignoring them completely until 6 a.m it's a tactic it's a strategy it works if you're willing to get up in the middle of the night because they need the toilet, if you make that decision, again, everything we do is proactive and preemptive. If you're willing to do that and prepared to make that decision, then be proactive with it. I'm going to go to bed at 10 and I'm going to get up at 1 a.m. And I'm going to get up at 4 a.m. And then again at 7 a.m. And then I'm up for the day. So you set an alarm, you get up on your time and hopefully you get to them and take them out before they start crying so you literally wake them up take them out no praise don't get them excited they go to the toilet they go straight back in you go straight back up to bed get another few hours sleep your alarm goes off and you catch them before they need the toilet what you don't want to do is wait for them to start crying then get up take them out and it can be okay but there will always be that little piece of okay well, i needed the toilet which is why i was crying but then when i was crying they came to me and mm -hmm. and again dogs aren't quite as that's not necessarily how they think. It's that binary yeah, thing. Yeah, but there is going to be some kind of conscious recognition of cry, attention, cry, person shows up, even if the crying was for um, a legitimate reason that they needed the toilet. So either make the decision that you're just going to ignore it completely, whether it's a cry because they need to go to the toilet or whether it's a cry because they're demanding attention. Mm -hmm. And if you do want to get them up in the night and take them out, which is the best way to do it. That's like perfection, then set an alarm and do it before they start crying. That's my advice on that subject. Cool. There we go. Should we wrap that episode up there? Yeah. I think so. That was a, a half decent length episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Like it if you did. Subscribe if you are new. If you want to ask a question yourself, come over to Instagram at Femria Canine Leaders. Whenever we're filming a batch of these videos, Rachel will put up a little Instagram story. You can ask questions. She picks them out at random and asks me. So that is how you get your questions answered. And we will see you on the next episode of Femria Canine Training.